Welcome in lecture number two of Film and Design in Principle. My name is Dr. Asim from the Department of Civil Engineering at Chicago University Peshawar. As I mentioned earlier, uh, all those slides are basically kind of a copied and uh, uh, prepared on the instruction from Professor Bion from the Texas A&M University in uh, USA and uh, my supervisor, Professor Dr. Bernhard Lechner from Technical University of Munich, and also where I have uh, done kind of a research work with uh, German Highways and uh, Virginia Tech University, uh, professional engineer Rupert Schemmerich. The lecture content, we will cover most of the topic which are very much important so the first thing first is uh, what is design? The design should conceive and develop plan for something to serve a specific function. So what is to serve a specific function means to fulfill structural and functional characteristics. The design must define the function prior to design. Means what is design? It should act according to the design. If it's designed for the LTV or HTV, are uh, commercial vehicles, so it should facilitate that part as well. So what is basically function of a permit? As I already mentioned again and again, it is not only the provision and access between two points, which is called accessibility, but it should also provide the function such as what is access, durable, safe, and smooth. Access means it should uh, satisfy the, the, as I mentioned earlier, that we have the two customer in the payment. The one is user, like driver, or the traveler, the second is, the second customer is the vehicle. <coughs> Access means it should act and react under all climate conditions, it should support, uh, so like what climate condition means, <coughs> So climate condition means that uh, the slip reaction and uh, action of fraction as well as the slipping percentage, scaling resistance, all those uh, stuff should be within the limit and it should provide the access in medium between two points. The second is durable. <laughs> Durable means it should divide and distribute the load equally if it's a pavement, if it's a flexible system, or if it's a rigid system. The third one is safe. Okay, safe means we are completely related to the two part in the safety where it should provide the maximum efficiency, maximum safety with a reasonable cost. While the third one is about smooth, Smooth means the riding quality and the and the uh, smooth riding uh, along with the maximum level of safety should be issued to the function of the permit. So, as an engineer, you should understand few facts and figures. The first one is about how many elements are needed into design of a highway. The first one is about root, which we call geometric design. So what is geometric design? Geometric design, in a simple word, all those elements which are visible with your own naked eyes are all those elements which you could visualize. For example, when you come out from your home and you reach to the road. So we usually see the road each and every day, but we never visualize the stuff which are in the road, such as gradient, level of elevation, drainage, alignment, layout, etc. So all those parameters are included in geometric design. The second part is about material where we are leading toward the max design. So material means that we should select max design on the basis of where we are going to construct our pavement, is it a earthen soil, is it a stabilized, is it a water-bound macadam, 
is it a tell fort construction needed and what type of maintenance material will be needed in future the third part is about pyramid technics design pyramid technics design we will we will learn and evaluate from the asto and metal design as well but the basic purpose of the pyramid technics design is if we are if we talk about flexible system flexible system means that like for example it's completely a layered system where we expect from the pyramid that from the top to the down all the forces should lead towards zero so how we can select the optimum technics design through which we can transfer our load in a more efficient way this is basically the purpose of the pyramid technics design if uh, all the loads are not leading towards zero that means that wrong technique design or structural number is selected this is all about that how many elements are needed into design of a highway now <coughs> the next question is very important which is called what information do you need as an engineer to design the pavement the first part is called topography in topography we will mainly talk about root uh, root granite cut and fill we will try to learn and explain one by one factor what is basically root root is directly uh, is directly basically uh, related to the alignment so the first and foremost we need to know about the topography of the area where we want to construct the pavement in topography we usually look for a terrain of area terrain means that is it a plain area is it a steep region is it a mountainous region <coughs> excuse me so uh, all those factors such as a plain plain means if the area is kind of a roundy so what will happen the operating speed will be less Okay. Uh, in the alignment the plane area is basically the idealistic approach if we are going to connect the ruler with urban area we usually deal with the steep and gradient approach right the next part is about drainage and hydrology you just need to imagine that if we are going to construct a a kind of a excess point or pavement uh, which which is basically passing through the mountainous and steep region so where you are going to provide the drainage facility as i mentioned earlier if we provide the inward slope inward slope means if we slow if, if we provide the slope which is exactly where the drainage facility is located near to the mountain then you need to provide the culvert at each at each and every 100 to 200 meter <coughs> the next part is about cut and fill cut and fill means uh, the next question is that we we usually do cut and fill cut and fill we usually do it with the places of where we have the kind of a hard rock right so the fill means like most of the question usually come from the student that if we put the fill in the in the area which is kind of a downward or where we need a kind of a <coughs> stable surface then what if the soil conditions are changed it will never change okay keep in mind that part because here we are dealing with the kind of a metamorphic rock which which are already reached to the to the high standard area okay but the main purpose of cut and fill is that we should select the area on the basis of the on the basis of the cost okay the next part is about existing soil so as we know that different soil strata has different strength and bearing capacity value so as an engineer we need to look for such information where we <coughs> where we can understand that the existing soil has the ability to withstand the load the first thing is that it should must carry the load which is basically the basic function of the pavement that it should divide and distribute the load or a large area 
The second part is about the structural requirement. Structural requirement means the ability to withstand load, while the third part is it should also provide the good uh, drainage requirement as well as the facility. So the tests which, which are basically needed for the existing soil determination that the soil have the ability to withstand against those load or not, such as shear test, sieve analysis, utter bulk limit, and SPT standard proctor test. Okay. <clears throat> so the next part is about weather. Okay, where we are completely related to the rainfall and temperature variation. As you can see, <clears throat> the drainage element or the hydrology element is basically continuously repeating from topography existing soil to the weather. <clears throat> as you know that the the human body germs such as cancer, AIDS, those stuff which really kill the person. So the drainage or when the water infiltrate in the pavement basically leads toward the deterioration of the pavement, <coughs> which is kind of kind of a very hectic in the long term if the water is continuously infiltrating in the supporting layer. <coughs> the next part is about the frost heave. For what is frost heave? First of all, you need to understand uh, when we design the pavement, when we have the surface runoff quality, okay, so that part you can resolve with the <coughs> <coughs> that part you can resolve with the <coughs> the kind of a uh, gradient or elevation or vernet facility but the frost here is a little bit different when basically the snow is uh, accumulated when the snow is accumulated uh, near to the shoulder and the same water infiltrate in the lower layer the next part is about durability of asphalt PCC road. When we provide the plain concrete cement road, <coughs> so at that time we should look for for those hidden places from where water can infiltrate in the infrastructure after the construction. The next part is about rotting. <coughs> so rotting or bleeding basically <coughs> occur when the asphalt binder fills the aggregate white during hot weather of traffic compaction and then expand onto the pavement surface. Okay. <coughs> so the next part is about low temperature cracking, which is basically happening from cold, and then high temperature uh, cracking, which is uh, uh, which is basically happening from the hot temperature. Those are different type of a uh, of a cracks which we call block cracking or map cracking, which uh, basically severity is increases from low to moderate and then to high. <coughs> the next part is about traffic load levels. Okay, so the only one parameter is there. It should satisfy the structural functional and structural requirement. So what does it mean by functional? <clears throat> functional means to support to support the pavement uh, in all weathering condition. While the structure is, we have the two part. The, the number one is the ability to withstand the load and also to provide the smooth riding quality. Next is about <clears throat> what are the what are the uh, kind of a different type of maintenance life uh, such as high or low we usually provide it. According to the German Railway Finance Minister, he mentioned that we spend more money on the maintenance rather than uh, constructing. So it's quite simple thing that maintenance is very important element because here we are leading with the people's life, right? <clears throat> so. The question is, is a designer, is an engineer, you need to ask 
that what you have done, what you have constructed, what you have uh, after the maintenance or rehabilitation, is it according to the acceptable quality? Is it uh, is it kind of accepted in the eyes of the of the traveler of the of the vehicles, etc.? <coughs> And then again, in the maintenance, we have the four phases, we have the four parts. The first is part A, B, C, D. Okay, if we talk about the, the maintenance exactly, <clears throat> so in the part A, we only do the patching. Okay, if we have a pop-out or somewhere cracks, so we only do patching type of it. So we just remove the, uh, the very top stuff which we call wearing coat <coughs> or black coat, we uh, remove that part up to the uh, some some like a uh, few meters, okay? So this is part A. In the part B, we basically remove the whole wearing coat. Uh, so the, the, the complete base layer is, uh, <coughs> is kind of open to the uh, environment and then we remove the whole black coat. So this uh, process is happening if we have a rotting or bleeding action happens in the pavement. And then we have part C where we remove the top coat with the with the base layer but the supporting layer such as subgrade layer in the uh, stabilized foundation is still there. And then in part D we basically remove the whole layer or when we think that we should change the alignment. <coughs> The next one is about uh, design life, okay? <coughs> design life means that uh, what you have constructed, how much initial cost it needed, and then how much maintenance cost uh, it will need it after how long. As I mentioned again and again, if someone tell you that the, that the design life of the permit is 10 years, okay? He don't know anything, but if he said, the design life is <clears throat> 100 year with maintenance. That means that the, the like this person has the basic thought about the permit. So, <clears throat> so in uh, term of design of life or for the permit, we should select something if we spend more money in the initial, that the maintenance should be low. That means what? That means uh, rigid permit. But if we spend less money, so the maintenance will be high, <coughs> which means flexible payment. It means that what is high excess, what is low excess, it only reflects to the terms of the loading. <coughs> the very last part is about what type of structure we basically needed and what is stabilization requirement, okay? So like those two parts are basically related to the contractor which uh, the like such as <coughs> when we want to provide the basic or the, the base foundation for the pavement, so then we usually look at what are the stabilization <coughs> uh, requirements which are basically used in uh, that specific part of the pavement.